Hi everybody, this is Rambling Toffee. I hope everybody's doing well this Monday. Um, I've not done a podcast in the last couple of weeks, so give myself a bit of a break from um, rambling on and on and on uh, for most of last season. Uh, um, so it was nice to have a bit of a break, but Everton was always on my mind from the minute the season ended. And, you know, it continues on. And there's always lots and lots of news uh, regarding Everton, uh, as you can guess, over the over the weekend. Obviously, last the Saturday before, um, Triple Seven Partners, the exclusive exclusivity period ended with uh, with them, and it meant that other people, other groups, other consortiums can come in and show their interest in taking over Everton Football Club, and it started off very quietly. Obviously, we all saw the stories with John, John regarding John Texter, um who has a 45% uh, shareholding at Crystal Palace and he's interested in wanting to take over the football club. So that was the first kind of breakaway of of interest, but that was before the exclusivity uh, period ended with uh, Seven Partners. Um, so they were, they were the first and then obviously there's always been some in the background who were interested in the club, but were keeping quiet for legal reasons. Obviously, they weren't able to speak at that point in time, um, there was always regarding George Downing and Andy Bell who were interested in interested in the club, but they didn't really have put any um, or shown that interest until obviously um, last week when basically they um, it was breaking news that they were wanted to take over the football club. Um, and included um, at that time, the story indicated that Dell, uh, people know a computer, uh, uh, Mike Dell, I think his name, Michael Dell, um, was actually going to help them invest um, and help them to actually acquire the club, help them to invest into the club and actually take over the club. So that was, but it, it was that thought before, oh my God, this, this person, his net worth is £120 billion, pound, one of the most richest men in the world. And it was like, they're interested in everything. And I was, I was absolutely, I couldn't believe it. I thought, yes, right people, we need to get this sorted as quickly quick as possible. If, if he wants to come in, he's interested. But then obviously the next day, you know, the story was coming out that basically it was just a loan that they're loaning um, Andy Bell and George Downing uh, about three hundred fifty million pound to take over, uh, you know, to help with acquiring um, Everton Football Club, and help in that sense. Um, so that was the first. Um, my view at that point in time was I thought they were they were even despite it was just a loan for three hundred fifty million pound from Dell. I always thought that. At some point in the future, that they, he might come back again, and they might be able, he might be able to give them more money, to help with funding the debt and funding the club and getting us back into a a good position, a stronger position financially. Um, you know, part of restructuring the restructuring the club, restructuring the finances to make it manageable and helpful to get off to get Everton back into a stronger position going forward. And at that point, I would guess probably Friday um, and Saturday at that point, I was very much uh, with with them and I thought that they would be the right people for the club. For the club. And they still could be. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see as things go on. But as you can guess, as the week we went into the weekend, it was like I was away for a day with my wife for, for our wedding anniversary. And it was like I was checking my phone and it was like bang, ping, 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 ping. It was like, who who else is interested in Everton Football Club? Who coming out of the woodworks? And of course, MSP, which I thought uh, were were more keen to actually get their money back and recruit their money and not take over Everton Football Club. Want, I've now, you know, I put an offer on the table regarding wanting to take over the football club. Obviously, they've got £158 million that is still over from, from the club. And the, the that situation is that they could probably turn that into equity. Further down on, if they were given the approval or given the um to uh, get that exclusivity period to take over the club, and they probably got investors as well. Some people on on social media and people reporting saying that they are one of the weaker of the groups that are interested in the club. But we'll see. 
we don't know well you just know MSP are obviously obviously interested in taking over the football club they have the loan obviously they've loaned the club for the stadium the investment that they put in and you know at one point in time they could have if they wanted to before triple seven partners you know obviously uh never happened but they were still trying to get the funding together a, a few couple of weeks ago um you know msp could have decided to take um control of the football club through uh, the security that they had with the, the with the loan but they, they chose not to they chose to extend with uh with machinery and give them more time to get that money at that point in time and obviously that's just you know how it's and I don't think they can do that now. I don't know. I, I don't know the ins and outs of a takeover scenario, but they, you know, they're there. So they've shown interest. They're interested in wanting to take over. Um, and then we got ACAP. Obviously, they've got interest there, but uh, they get popped out. And they, ACAP, if people want to know, if they don't know, is they have taken over, obviously, from 777. They were funding 777 partners um, with, obviously, the money that's, now now in the club at this moment in time so they're again you know they're there but from what i've heard today is that they have not lodged a bid for the club um and so at this time you know will they follow through the john dexter one i don't think will happen due to the fact that um he has to share, sell his shares at crystal palace uh, because of conflict of interest um issue so he's not going to uh, take over. Um, the other ones that was came out, I think it was late, I think uh, Friday night, I think in, later on was, I can't say his name, Munkini, um, Mon Monakini. Uh, please, <laughs> uh, if you're hearing this, please, you know, tell me if I've what if I've said it right or wrong. But they come in with a consortium of American investors and Saudi investors, and they've put an offer in a four hundred million pound straight up money to Mashiri to take his shareholding um, and I'm going to guess they'll pay that and then they'll come in if they were to come into the club they will then obviously refinance the debt restructure the debt and do all the things that are necessary with with that so at the moment that's at the moment that's another one there might be other interested parties out there I think there's a, a person I thought feed feed killing feed killing who is um at Roma, but uh, he, they, he wants to take a stake, but again, he's not actually put an actual offer in at the moment. Um, so yeah, so there's plenty of bids, but the weekend was absolutely mad. I couldn't believe the amount. I'm thinking, you know, for months and months and months, we've had this. Sadly, now what we found is an exclusivity deal with Triple Seven Partners. There's been lots of interest, obviously, in the whole, you know from out there so i'm going to make a, 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 a feeling of what's actually happened and why we've had all these bids come flying out there over the last few days and for me what it is obviously for nine months or eight months nearly nine months mashiri gave exclusivity to triple seven partners he could i I don't know why he could have pulled the plug on it at any point in time. I don't know if he could or did, couldn't, but there was an, obviously there was an agreement in place. That agreement included money coming in from themselves, from 777, into the club. Obviously, we all say it's up £200 million. To say that amount, I think somebody said to me it was £158 million. It's $200 million that is actually being invested into the club to keep the lights on, to keep the club running week to week, month to month throughout the period of time while this takeover was ongoing. Obviously, the Premier League gave Triple Seven, this is what you have to do. You know, you need to fund, uh, pay pay for, the, pay for the, the money into the stadium, keep the club running, put that into this separate account, um, include um, and also pay uh, MSP the £158 million, Pay them. As soon as you've done all that and you've got proof of funding that you can, you know, you can actually help this club and restructure the club and everything else, we will give you the approval. Obviously, 
we all know now and it's no point going through uh going back in time and going through old ground but that's what's happened you know and that exclusivity obviously was extended again why maybe it's because you know machiri knew more than what we knew that he knew that was interested parties out there and i'm guessing he's probably spoke to all these different types of interested parties for months and he can only do that privately you know and he can do that it doesn't matter it's just you know chatting there's no kind of restrictions on that um and he's probably done that over a period of time bringing people in and the biggest thing i think is everton's survival in the premier league because i think if we were in the championship i don't think i think we would still have we may have probably still have a, a andy bell and george downing and we will still probably get some help from dell um from them for their investing to help they could they could have actually helped maybe i don't know but an msp as well may have uh, had you know gone on to the have the opportunity as well so maybe maybe those two if we were relegated but you just never know but I'm, that's just me surmising off the top of my head you know you, know, you, you guys let me know what you think but Basically, we stayed in the Premier League. And at the moment, the Premier League, as much as what's happening with Man City at the moment, and, you know, suing the Premier League and, you know, and their 115 charges, us with PSR issues, and they continue to have PSR issues, and the independent regulator that was needed by the Premier League, you know, by government to bring in to, to man, you know, actually sort out the Premier League and the way it's run and governed. Um you know, all this thing's up running. But despite that, it's still, according to, well, the viewership and the people who watch Premier League football, it's one of the biggest leagues in the world. The quality of it is not great. My personal view, watching Premier League week in, week out, only some of the, the you know, the top of teams, you know, you get some good football matches and, you know, but for quality purposes, it's not, you know... It's not bees knees. I can probably say German football is probably when I watch German football on the TV. I I think that's more exciting for me personally, but that's just a view. Um, but to the wider world and the wider audience, that you know the Premier League is is the number one place, and that's why all these investors and people want to actually invest in in football in and be, in the Premier League specifically. So being part of that. But it's but that is the key is that we've stayed in the Premier League and that's why we are now in a situation where we've got bidders, and through uh, the bobble uh, from the Bones View um, on his pod their podcast today, uh, with Ben, um, stated that there's three bidders at the moment at the ones I've just I've mentioned, and it's now in Mashiri's hands, and I don't trust Mashiri if you throw throw me. And I just hope that he makes the right decision. So today, the one, the, the um, Moondi Keen, I can't say it, sorry. I'll get a lot of laugh for that when you're reading that later, when you're listening to this later on. But that bid with the Saudi um, prince and Saudi royal family or whoever, and the American investors as well, uh, from perspective, is if they're just going to pay Here's the four hundred million pound, uh, fad. Take it. That's what we we're going to pay you for your shares, and we're just going to completely restructure the debt or wipe it out. I don't know what they're going to do. Pay the stadium off. Pay MSP. Do all the necessaries that they need to do, and they've got all the funding in place. Then at this precise moment, they would probably be the right people, and we're all thinking, oh god, because it's a Saudi. But the problem is, what's the problem with uh, Man City at the moment? It's in the Premier League about uh, sponsorship and commercial, where the owner, obviously, is state-owned. Manchester City is state-owned. Newcastle is state-owned. Will Everton be state-owned? And it's quite intriguing that when Man City... You have, um, put that, well, they haven't put the statement out, but basically was put out that they are suing, which is currently in court today for the next couple, couple of weeks going through arbitration. It's interesting that Everton or supposedly supported Manchester City 
in suing the Premier League. Now, my mindset thinking it's because, you know, the PSR issues that we have and we just have a complete, you know, dislike for the Premier League and how they run and how they dealt with Everton and maybe they're just supporting Man City because obviously Man City got 115 charges. My personal view is on on the whole thing of that is, you know, if they were to get win this uh, uh, this case, that means they'll have more money, you know, more commercial. They could do whatever they like, and they can spend, spend, spend whatever, and they can be, and they can just run away with it. And my concern is about competitiveness. The league is. I want the league to be competitive, and I want it to be even on throughout whoever in the Premier League to give everybody an opportunity. Yes, it's not going to be always the case that you get like sort of Ips which you come up, you know, they're going to be challenging for the title. But we've had that period, you know, that time when Leicester had that season when they won the league. I would like to see a more variation of teams up there challenging. Currently, last season it was Aston Villa. Sorry, I'm going to die. Sorry, I'm digressing everybody from my usual ramble about Everton. But it, 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 you can understand where I'm coming from on this. Is that, you know, you want the likes of Everton in the future, hopefully, to be up there again, challenging with the other teams and have an opportunity to be, you know, to be up for the title, to get into the Champions League, to get in those positions, to win cup competitions. And that's what makes... Premier League, unpredictable, or was the Premier League years ago when early days and also back in the football league days. Watching football, you just didn't know from game to game who would, you know, the unpredictability who would get the results, and you would always find five or six teams always going for the title for a long length of time, and then okay, it'll break away. And it become the usual things, but it made it more interesting. And it wasn't always the usual six teams, as they say now, or the five teams back then, or the the big clubs. It was uh, you can always say yes. It's always the big club in the end will always be the ones that will be, you know, up for up for it. You know, you know, always end up winning the titles. But I always pick the ever the eighties as. You know, yes, it was Liverpool and Everton, and always was. But you had Manchester United, you had Arsenal, and okay, they you looked upon as big teams, but you always had like Sevilla, at one point in time. You had, in the early eighties, you had Watford, Aston, you know, um, Ipswich, Notts Forest, who won a title, they won the European Cup. You've had teams who have and Tottenham for a period won you know won the UEFA Cup in eighty four. They won cup competitions, but they were always there and there about. But also there was teams below that who always broke away a little bit, like I mentioned in the early 80s, Watford, as an example. So that's going back in time, and I'm, you know, I digress from that. But I, what, what, what as fans I want to see when you go to start of the season is that in your mind you think, we might have a chance this season. The team looks good. I think we might be okay. And it's not just Everton me thinking that, but it's all the other clubs. Is that they could go on a really good run and win loads of games and really push themselves further up. Yes, you're always going to have the bigger clubs, and sadly at the moment it's all about money. I know then they've got the most money and they can spend the most money. And that's where PSR comes in and the issues about PSR. You know, Aston Villa has to sell a player. They've just got into the Champions League after a really good season. Newcastle have to sell a player to be compliant with PSR. Or, you know, because the season before they were in the Champions League. But they, they their ambitions is to go higher up. They want to win titles. The ambition is there to do so. But they're not being allowed it. PSR seems to be always in the way. But you can always say that, well, that means you have to spend it, you know, the money that you 
bring in and everything. You have to use it wisely. You have to do it the right ways, and and that's the only way you can do it to actually, you know, to function in that sense. But you know, football is not like any other business. It's unpredictable, and you know, you you have to sell players. You have to bring players in. You have to spend the money. You have to build a squad. You have to build a team. You have to make it the best it can be, and that gets you into a situation where you, you know, you will make a lot of debt, and you have to restructure. You have to move things around, and that's why PSR is put in place. But it has to be done the right way. But you know, but hopefully. At some point in the future, under new government, the independent regulator comes in, we can sort out, you know, the people at the Premier League and get things in place that works for everybody. That, you know, that everybody understands that if you breach, you breach. And if you breach, you get points deduction. If you breach, this is what happens to you. This is what happens. And you accept it and you live with it. This is, that's the way it is, Okay. I'm trying to manage money better, but also be mindful that every club that's in the Premier League, if they've got Saudi uh, owned princes or they've got investors who've got billions of pounds and they've got enough money and they want to invest in to actually get the best players for their, their team, they should be allowed to under a means. There's got to be a structure in place to allow that. But anyway, that's for another conversation, which I'll do in another episode um, at some point in the future. But yeah, that's, you know, the takeover, as I, I get digressed, uh, get back to the takeover. Yes, yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting the next few days. Will we will we get an exclusivity agreement this week? Um, it's the 9th of Jan, uh, June today. Will we get something quickly? And get the ball rolling, get things in place, get things sorted. Then that means that when we start the season, that you know everything is in place and we can move forward and get ready for our final season at Goodison and moving into the into the new stadium, um, and move in a positive frame of mind. Um, we've got obviously obviously at the moment, you know, we've got the contract situation with Dominic Calvert Lewin. Uh, we've we've got John Bramfway this weekend. There was a story that you know Manchester United were closing in on a deal by the end of the month. Uh, for John Bramfway, uh, but that's gone quite on that. Uh, the club have said that they you know they don't need to sell him. They don't want to sell him. I think Hanan is the player that I think is going to be the one that will leave. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yes, we need money reinforced money coming in. Obviously, we've offered contracts to. Seamus Coleman and um, um, Ashley Young. Uh, they're discussing, obviously, with Jack, bringing Jack Harrison back in. Uh, Dominic Calvin, as I mentioned, he's been offered uh, negotiating a new contract. So at the moment, there's all, all that sort of stuff going on, but we need to strengthen our team, and we don't have the money in place to do that at the moment because we're still in this... As much as it's very, very exciting that we've got all these bids coming in and what could be and what could happen and it could help the club going in, in in the future. We need something now. We need something to take place now to take this club to, the, you know, to help us strengthen to this so we can start the season, you know, that we can go forward um, and hopefully just, I think my purpose is just to survive next season. And if we can improve on what we've done, if we can bring anybody in on a free or on loans or anything out like that, the market's out there to do so and we're allowed we can do it. If we can get some money for say Anana, if he can move on, um, then we can use some utilize some of that money to actually do so. I know Neil Moore pays back 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 at Everton. Um hopefully he'll go back on loan. No disrespect to him, he's not good enough. Everton Football Club and he's still bad mouthing the club. Well, uh, that's just one of the biggest uh, terrible decisions that Kevin Felwell made uh, regarding bringing him in. 
and decisions that he has made over the last few years that, you know, have just been baffling. Um, so, you know what my views are, Kevin Fairwell, I just feel that when the new people come in, I think they may be very impressed by him at the moment in time, but I would think they need to bring new people in because it's not just going to be about what we see on the field. It's restructuring the academy, restructuring behind the scenes. It's going to be a big, big, big ask. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting few days. Let me know in the comments below um, on Spotify or on social media what you think about the bids, who do you think you would want to um, to take over, um, you know, what do you think, um, how think, quickly do you think this should be done? Is it going to be another 12 weeks, like the standard way for a takeover, or because if all the funds are in place and everything's in order, that it could be done quicker? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it's, it was an interesting weekend. It was an exciting weekend. It was great. Some positivity going on with the club. Um, and I just hope it gets sorted out as soon as possible. I just hope Mishiri makes the right decision and he does it as soon as possible because this just cannot drag on and on and on and on because if we don't, if, if it doesn't, it, it, we, we're just going to struggle again. We might even struggle even more next season. There's an opportunity we might get a piece, PSR breach again. Um, so just have to wait and see on that but it's a positive period at the moment let's hope it gets whoever it is gets an exclusivity um and gets the opportunity to um take this club on do the right things get the right people in do the right you know restructure it throughout the whole of the club uh not just on the field of course off it um get the right people in We'll get behind it. I know for the fact that the you know Evertonians, when we find out who, you know, is going to take who will take over this club, we'll get right behind them, because um, nobody wanted to get behind Triple Seven Partners when they were in. Everybody saw the writing on the wall. It looked like Mishiri didn't, and just took way, 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 way too long. Imagine if he realised that earlier than that, we could have been in a very different place now. We could have had the right people in. To the beginning of summer, we could have got them out of an opportunity actually to spend money on players. We could have had opportunities to strengthen and move forward, but that's not the case. And we go on, but the positives is that you know they're they're out there, they're serious, they got some money, they got they they want to invest, they want to put the money in, they want to do the right things, they want to take bring our wonderful football club back to where it should belong. And, you know, as Neil Status needs to opt to, nothing but the best is good enough. That is what our motto is. And that is what these people, when they come in, should adhere by and go after and focus on that. The best, nothing but the best is good enough. The people that we have need to be, need to have that mantra in their head. That whenever they go in after uh, naming rights for stadiums, or sponsorship, or whatever it may be that we are chasing, it has to be the best, and it has to be the best value, and it has to be best for this football club. Nothing but the best is good enough. So the likes of Stake, which will be gone next season, after next season, and, you know, that kind of sponsorship will be gone, because they are not good enough. The value, whatever we we paid, whatever they paid us, may have helped for a short period of time, but it's you know we need better. So we'll see what happens. So anyway, so there we go. That's uh this uh, uh the Ramble Topic podcast overdone for today. Um, I do appreciate everybody who supported me over the last season, um, and been fantastic. Um, you know, with the feedback and everything else. Um, this. This podcast today I've done on my phone. Um it's just an issue with my laptop. Um so um so this will be uploaded to YouTube and then hopefully uploaded to um Spotify later on and then on all usual platforms going forward. Throughout the summer there'll be opportunity that I'll be uh, speaking to one or two of you great Evertonians out there 
uh, Mark, who uh, Mark Thomas, his name in who flies the drone, uh, does the drones um, over Bramley Moor. Um, I've had a chat with him. Hopefully, we'll, I'll be getting him on at some point in the summer, but hopefully before the season starts. And also, you know, Everton Views, I've not forgot about you, Stu. Uh, we'll get you on again uh, at some point when I've got all uh, the system and everything else sorted to get you on as well. Um, and just to as, we'll see where it takes us on that, just talk about all things blues. Other than that, thank you again for listening, watching and all the support. This is the Rambling Toffee signing out and I'll speak to you again soon. All right, take care. Bye bye.